Hello everyone, welcome to IntelliPack. In this video, we will be knowing about paging in operating system. Memory is divided into fixed size blocks using paging. The logical memory is organized into blocks called pages and the memory is divided into frames. We employ a specialized hardware cache memory called TLB since paging demands extra time for the address conversion. This video discusses topics like paging in operating systems with examples, the fundamental paging technique, the conversion of a logical address into a physical address, page tables in operating systems, the translation of a look-aside buffer or TLB, paging hardware with TLB, paging protection, and the benefits and drawbacks of paging in operating systems. Let's get into the video now. Operating systems uses a variety of memory allocation and management techniques. We store data in some memory management strategies in a continuous fashion, much like an array of data. On the other hand, some systems store data in segments, pieces or blocks. On the other hand, some techniques divide the memory unevenly, while others divide it into fixed size blocks. In other words, paging is nothing more than a form of memory management strategy that uses non-continuous memory allocation to store data. Let's now talk about paging uh, in depth. What does paging in operating systems mean? A fixed size memory location, storage and management strategy is called paging. Paging divides the memory into two categories. Frames are the name for the small fixed size memory blocks that make up the main memory. The collection of frames is another name for primary memory. The logical or secondary memory is organized into pages, which are compact fixed size blocks. Image Paging loads the pages of secondary memory or processes for the CPU to use while keeping track of all the free frames to of the memory. Pages can simply be loaded into frames because the frame size is equal to a page's size. To increase the memory and CPU consumption, we can use frames and pages of the same size. Now let us move on to the next topic, examples of operating system paging. To understand how paging functions, let's use an example. Think about the following. The main memory is 16 KB in size. One process takes up to 4 kilobytes. Now one kilobyte is the size of one frame. Page size is often known as a document size is one kilobyte. There are four processes in the system that needed to be executed, that is P1, P2, P3 and P4 respectively. Additionally, an 8KB process named P5 is available for execution. All of the frames are initially empty and one by one pages of the same size, that is 1KB, will be loaded. P1 has now been loaded into the primary memory. 4KB of the frame size is being acquired by P1. P5 was loaded into the frames at the same time since it was likewise prepared to be performed. A succession of pages may or may not be loaded. The following example demonstrates how the first 4KB of process, that is P5, are imported after P1 and the remaining 4KB are saved after process P3. Process P1 is uh, shown obtaining the first 4 frames in the diagram below. Since the process P1 is 4 pages in size, the first 4 pages of P5 capture the following 4 frames. Due to P3's size being 4 pages, uh, which it is because P3 came in between. Now P3 receives the next 4 frames. The remaining 4 pages of P5 have finally been received to the final 4 frames. Now that we know the basic understanding of uh, paging, uh, let us go through some of the techniques. As we've already covered, the fundamental principle of paging is to divide the logical, that is the main memory, into fixed size blocks called pages and the physical or the secondary memory into fixed size blocks called frames. Now the goal is to execute pages that have been loaded into the memory. Operating system's key subtopic of paging is memory management. Through the loading of processes from secondary memory to main memory, paging improves the CPU utilization. In secondary memory, pages might be spread across several separate locations. The fundamental concept is to save the pages into the main memory frames. Usually when a procedure requires them, pages are loaded into frames. Now let us move on to the next topic, logical addresses to physical addresses translation. 
The real address in the main memory now differs from the one in the CPU. A physical address is what the main memory address is, is called. And a logical address is what the CPU generates. The CPU generates a logical address that is composed of two parts. Every page in the physical memory has a base address which is contained in the page number. Pages are indicated with the letter P. Page offset. The page offset uh, specifies how many bits are needed to fit a word of data into a page. The letter D stands for page offset. The basic format of a logical address is depicted in the picture below, where P denotes the page number and D the page offset. MMU converts the logical address into physical address, that is a memory management unit. Address translation is the process of converting logical memory to physical memory. The actual location of the instruction in the RAM is determined through address translation. The physical address is then divided into two parts, the frame number, the appropriate base address of the frame, also known as the frame number, is provided by the page table. The precise frame where the page is to be stored is indicated by the frame number. The letter F stands for the frame number. Now, page offset. The number of words from the page must be read is the offset. The letter D stands for page offset. In address translation, page numbers are offset are both utilized. Now let us move on to the next topic which is OS page table. It is a type of mapping data structure known as a page table and it is used to record the mapping between a logical address and a physical address. The physical memory that belongs to the kernel houses page tables. Each page's base address is then contained in the page table. The physical memory address is then obtained by combining this base address with the page offset. The operating system controls the page table with the aid of a processor register known as the page table base register or PTBR. The page table base address is stored in the PTBR. The fact that it takes so long to determine the physical address from the logical address is one of the key issues with paging technique. When it comes to CPU utilization, time is a crucial component. As a result, we have a method for resolving the time consumption problem. We employ a unique form of cache memory called TLB. Find out more about the TLB cache memory. Now let us take a look at what is translation of look aside buffer or also known as TLB. As we've already discussed, using a special hardware cache memory during paging adds some extra time to the address translation process. We employ a tiny quick lookup cache memory or also called as the translation of look aside buffer TLB. Because TLB is a cache memory, its key benefit is speed. Cache memory, however, it uh, costs a lot of uh, money to buy. TLB is uh, typically located halfway between the main memory and the CPU cache. The TLB is located close to the CPU, so it can be accessed more quickly than the main memory page table by the CPU. TLB is made up of key value pairs representing recent main memory to physical memory address translations. We can infer that the most frequently visited page address is kept in the TLB. As a result, the address translation cache is another name for it. Only the most current page table entries are kept in TLB. Now let us move on to the next topic which is paging hardware with TLB. Instead of going to the page table whenever there is a demand for a specific page, we first enter in the TLB. We obtain the TLB index and matching frame number using the page number. It is possible to generate the physical address using the frame number and the page offset. By avoiding the page table in this manner, we can save a lot of time. Now the next topic is, what happens if a page frame number is found or not found? So in this case, a TLB hit occurs when the required page frame number is located in the TLB cache. Going inside the page table is quicker after a TLB hit. On the other hand, we refer to it as a TLB miss. If we are unable to locate the needed page number within the TLB cache, the page table must be consulted to create the appropriate physical address in case of a TLB miss. On the other hand, we refer it to as a TLB miss if we are unable to locate the needed page number within the TLB cache. The page table must be consulted to create the appropriate physical address in case of a TLB miss. Now let us understand what is a page protection. 
Paging must be protected in order to prevent data loss when processes are retrieved from secondary storage and put into the main memory as pages or fragmentation. To guard against any data loss, we add an extra bit called a valid or invalid bit. With each page, we link a few bits known as protection bits. So in order to specify protection on the associated pages, we also link the additional protection bits with each entry in the page table. Now let us see what are the benefits of paging in OS. The foundation of paging is the division of both logical and physical memory into fixed size blocks known as pages and frames. Let's talk about paging advantages and downsides. The data can be stored non-continuously thanks to paging. Paging makes it possible to load a page into a frame without losing any data because the frame and page sizes are the identical ones. This helps to address the problem of external fragmentation. The same size of the pages makes page swapping simple. Another fairly straightforward memory management strategy is paging. Paging is even quicker while using the TLB cache together. Now let us see some of the drawbacks of paging. Page access time or the amount of time it takes to translate an address is very high when TLB is not used or when the TLB fails. Since the page table is also kept in the main memory, paging needs a lot of memory. And because the page has a set size but a process can request more or less space, paging prevents outward fragmentation but does not address the problem of internal fragmentation. That's it from my side guys. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Now that we are done with the session, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to get the latest updates on IntelliPath. Just a quick info guys, if you want to make a career in software engineering, then IntelliPath provides an advanced certification program on software engineering and application development by ENICT Council of IIT Guwahati. And it is taught by IIT Guwahati professors and industry experts. This course is designed to upskill and land your dream job.